Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM. I'm joined by our guest this evening, John Mellencamp. John, thanks for being here. Uh, my pleasure to be here. We are in John's art studio on Lake Monroe, just outside of Bloomington, Indiana. John has a new album. Be out at the beginning of the year, Strictly a One-Eyed Jack. He's going to take the album uh, on tour, a tour sponsored by AEG, and we're proud to say uh, Turner Classic Movie. I think that's absolutely wonderful. No place I'd rather... I've never taken sponsorship in my career. Oh, I know. Very famously, you don't you don't want sponsors, but but we're not ordinary. We're not we're not a typical corporate sponsor. That's right. We're uh, thrilled to be partnering with you, and, and thanks for reaching out. It means a lot to us. I uh, I couldn't be happier. Thank you very much. First movie that we have tonight uh, is Fugitive Kind from 1960. Joanne Woodward, Marlon Brando, and uh, the great Anna Magnani. I've talked to Joanne about that film. Working with those people. She said she learned a lot from them and, and from, from Lamette. But that movie took place in like Mississippi or somewhere. Yeah, like Mississippi. That. And uh, it was actually shot in Connecticut. Yeah, right. Uh, I think the interior is in the Bronx. Yeah. Like it, yeah. <laughs> shot in Connecticut. And why? Because Lamette can't leave New York. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's Sidney Lamette. That's right. <laughs> he could not leave New York. Because I was also talking to Lamette about doing a show that was uh, uh, a movie that. Uh, uh, called Diamond Joe. And uh, he said, it takes place in Texas. It can't go to Texas. I said, we can make it look like not, we can make, you know, Long Island look like Texas. I don't know. Lamette needs to be in New York so much uh, that he, uh, uh, Mel Brooks told me that, that, that he got, that he was doing a play in Philadelphia. I mean, you figure you can go home at night if you need to. Uh, he couldn't do it. He brought Mel up to see the show. And then afterwards he's like, how about you take over? Because <laughs> I got to get on the train. Yeah, I got to go home. Yeah. Um, uh, I read uh, you were talking to an, uh, an art uh, critic or an art writer about your art, a young guy. And uh, you started talking about movies while you guys were talking about paintings. And he revealed that he hadn't seen Streetcar Named Desire. And you said, you got to see it because you're going to be like, oh, damn. You said something else. This is the greatest acting I've ever seen. And then a moment later, you said, if you want to see the greatest actor, you watch Streetcar, and then you said, or Fugitive Kind. That you you see Brando, uh, the performance here is as good in that same level anyway, as, as, as his is in Streetcar. Brando at his best was the greatest actor America has ever produced. I, I don't care how he turned out, forget all that stuff. I have two favorite dialogues in two different movies, Fugitive Kind and Last Picture Show. Brando talks about, I have it written in my house. On, 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 uh, I had an artist come in and paint it on, on the wall about there's a certain type of bird that flies and it swings, stretch out this long. And it flies so high that the hawks can't see him. And it has no legs, so it can never land on this earth. And the only time it lands on this earth is when it dies. That is, and Brando's delivery of that speech could have been the whole movie for me. I could just watch that, and I've watched it a hundred times. Matter of fact, when I got married to Elaine Irwin, it was part of our wedding vow. Uh, it's on the wall of my, uh, uh, in my house. I think it's one of the greatest things that, uh, that he ever wrote. Uh, and Brando's performance of it just brought it to uh, a whole different level that I don't even think a writer could imagine. All right, great information, John. Thanks very much. Let's take a look at the film. Here it is, directed by Sidney Lumet from 1960. Marlon Brando, Joanne Woodward, Anna Magnani, The Fugitive Kind. Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz, once again, joined by our guest programmer tonight, John Mellencamp. He picked The Fugitive Kind. Uh, John, uh, great information and a great film. That's a lovely film with a lot of good things being said. Before we uh, leave the the fugitive kind, I, uh, Brando's amazing. But this is, uh, I mean, these 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 two women, Joanne Woodward and Anna Magnani. Uh, I mean, they're such grown ups to me. Joanne Woodward is young, but still, it feels like these are such grown up actors taking these characters and creating something. I just think all three of them are outstanding in this. Film. Jo Joanne told me a story. Uh, that I don't think she'd mind me telling, that she wanted to be an actress so bad. 
she grew up in South Carolina, that she went and sat underneath the house and would not come out until her parents gave her permission to go to New York. Really? She sat underneath the house for a couple, three days. I'm not coming out. <laughs> I'm staying here until you guys give me permission to come out. And to go to New York to, to learn, to study. Right. Yeah, yeah just, just to study. Yeah. And, you know, uh, so beautiful and so kind yeah. uh, uh, of a woman. And Did you know her husband? Yeah. I, re I remember the first time I met Paul Newman, uh, we were doing some kind of political thing for John Kerry. And uh, I have a son named Hud. And I, all of a sudden, there's Newman in my dressing room because I'm playing and he's speaking. And he says, I came to meet Hud Mellencamp. And uh, I said, Hud, Hud was there, but he wasn't in my dressing room. So I uh, went and got him, and Newman and I started talking. And then uh, Joanne came in. And the minute Joanne came in, I kind of went, see you, Paul. Uh, listen. Because <laughs> she was so beautiful, yeah. man. She was so beautiful. It was just like, she just took my breath away. And it was like... <laughs> Okay, it's nice meeting you, Paul. Yeah, she is something, and she's something here, too. And I just find Anna Magnani, I'm drawn to her and everything I, I see her in. There's such some depth, and she looked tired the whole movie, like, but in a way that you you knew that character, that woman yeah. was tired. Yeah, she was sick and tired of herself, sick and tired of this life. And the guy that played Jabe... Victor Joy is something, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, looks he, like, he looks like death. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was so awful yeah. of a person. And uh, my wife, Elaine, at the time, she, whenever I started acting awful, she would go, Jabe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I also, the ending there, you didn't, like, I can't believe that I could get Brando being killed. I did not think you'd also lose a pregnant Adam Agnani. That is a brutal, brutal man. ending. Can, can you imagine trying to get that movie made today? They, they would go, there's no, no way. Yeah. John, thanks very much. That's a wrap for The Fugitive Kind, but stick around. John and I will return momentarily with Marlon Brando, Eve Marie Saint, Carl Malden, and On the Waterfront.